Greetings, back again. We're not going to talk about these. These are some cheap pens I bought. We'll play with these some other time. But uh, what we want to talk about today is what's in this box. This is my Pilot Evil Falcon Pen. Now, why do I call it that? Well, uh, we'll get to that. This Falcon Pilot is... Uh, has been talked about by so many people. They've already discussed them. It's a plastic injected molded pen. Uh, I'm sure that the uh, fill gate for the for the uh, form was probably here, which they cap off with a finial, and it's got a nice cap. It's been polished very well, so you don't see any seams. It's got your typical appointments. I'm sure everyone has seen these pens with the flexity. I like this clip because it's a, a it's a large piece. It's not just folded metal. It's a little nicer. And on the inside, of course, is my evil falcon nib, so named because it looks like a falcon. Well, I call this my evil falcon pen because the uh, nib on this is the soft, extra fine nib. And it's when I'm using it for writing, it's not too bad. But if I try to use it for flexing, it feels like it's digging into the paper like a razor blade. It gets just a little bit sharp. But uh, thus the moniker, Evil Falcon. Once you get the pen open, you see that it's got a nice section, again, polished very nicely. You can see the seam on the form in the threads right here. They can polish the rest of the pen, but they can never quite get that out. And um, as we've all seen in these pens, when you close it up, you can snap it over, and then it'll close in one, and about four-fifths. And we know that it's sealed up. Now, the, one of the nice things about this pen is inside the cap is it has a uh, an inner liner. And that inner liner really does seal this nib very well. When I have taken this pen and left it sitting for a long period of time, I don't get any hard starts with it. It will still write. And after I've cleaned it, if there's any moisture, sometimes I'll actually see moisture beating up on the nib. And the way that I know that this is sealing up very well is because... If I take this pen apart and we do the same thing, we're able to close this pen in one, two, a three twists before it finally hits the bottom of the threads. So with the nib and the cartridge converter inside of it, we know that this pen is a one and four-fifths, three-quarters, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this pen has the cartridge converter, and I will post that and set that aside so it doesn't roll away. And uh, you can see that I've left the plunger about halfway down. That's so that it's easier for me to break it free if it does get stuck. I tend to use this pen with some hard inks. Uh, the reason why I use those inks in this pen is because I can completely disassemble this pen and if I need to, I can replace this piston. Now, the uh, pen is, as I said, it has this little converter in it. And uh, the uh, Falcon nib is completely removable from this pen. You can see that the nib just sits on this very interestingly, interestingly designed feed for this pen. And here's that gold Evil Falcon soft nib, which I keep cleaned up. And because I can completely disassemble this pen, it makes it very easy for me to completely clean this pen. And this does have a right and a wrong way to put it back together. So you've kind of got to find where the little notch is in the top for the nib to go back in. And then you just push it back home. And uh, let's see if we got that in correctly. Yes, we did. So, And the same thing with the cartridge converter. You just slide that in and push it down until it's locked in place. And we'll push that, oh, let's get the, it has little balls inside of it to break the surface tension of the ink that might build up inside that pen. Now we're going to ink this pen up and we're going to use this Diatramentus Document Brown. Now if everyone says, ah, you're going to use those permanent inks in this pen, I can completely disassemble this pen and I can get it clean. I've done it numerous times. And I like to check the bottom of the bottle because sometimes there'll be a little sediment on the bottom and if there is, you just have to agitate the bottle gently until you can be fairly sure that you've got a good mix. So let's 
open this bottle. I like these bottles. They've got a nice hard cap on them. And we're not going to get a full fill on this. We'll just take what we can get. And that's not, that's, we can do better than that. So how do you get the ink complete? How do you get a better fill? Turn it upside down and kind of bounce it. And then we will close this back up. We don't want to do that. So there's still ink up in that feed. I want to get that ink down. There we go. And there we are. It'll bubble a little bit as we do this. I'm trying to get the ink driven up into into the nib section. And it'll start to pool without bubbling when we get it up there. Now we can redo it. Try to get a better try to get a better fill. Oh there we go. And we certainly did with that one. So now I want to take a paper towel. I'm not really set up here. And we're going to clean that up a little bit. We will just we will just wipe that off here. There we go. And put the top on our ink. Always cap your ink. Put our pen back together. And let's see if it'll write. Sure enough. So I'll cap the pen. Set that aside. And let's get some paper. And let's see. Let's, let's go on this. Now I like this Deatramentus ink in this Falcon, evil Falcon pen, because the ink uh, flows very well in this nib. In fact, here if I were to use it for writing, they call this a soft fine for so that we can do our famous, of course we want to be able to, everybody loves to flex just a little bit, right? Everybody likes the flex nib. They like to draw their swirly doodles and things like that. But like I said, you can hear it. You can hear it digging into the digging into the paper. And uh, we're going to wipe that excess off the top of the nib. But that's not what I do with my pen. My pen is, uh, again, a very good writer. I can bring my fingers up onto the nib. I can write with it. But even if I hold it at the very end and just pull it down... I can get some nice lines. It create a lot of nice line variation with this pen. And that's why I like to use this pen for drawing. I use this pen. It's a little higher tool pen. It's not really a tool pen category. It's more of a, it's a, it's what I refer to as an art pen. I, I can do some writing with it if I want to. But uh, for the most part, I just use it for doing artwork. I mean, today... I want to draw a little picture of uh, an old restaurant that used to be on Pacific Coast Highway. It was called Ted's Rancho. They had this really unique sign. It uh, it had straight sides that were at an angle and it had these curved top. And on the sign, of course, it read Ted's Rancho. And uh, then it said restaurant in red letters and steaks and seafood. And uh, Ted's Rancho was significant because we loved it when I was a kid because it had this big horseshoe on the roof. And uh, the horseshoe had these yellow light bulbs inside of it, which was kind of different because uh, the silver was, I can't remember the name of the Vegas, the Vegas Casino, but it had a big silver horseshoe. Maybe that was the name of it, the silver horseshoe. And they had white sparkly lights and they would shimmer. Ted's lights would just be on all the time. And... And I remember many late evenings driving home on a foggy night, you could see Ted's big yellow horseshoe glowing in the night. And uh, Ted's Rancho was just up the highway from the notorious Thelma Todd's Cafe, which uh, hadn't, served a, hadn't served a meal in many, many a long year after Thelma was uh, suspiciously found dead in her garage. But uh, Ted's Rancho was... Uh, was this steakhouse on the side of the highway and it was fairly well regarded it had a little barn and it had a little bar on it and it had that funny little sign that read cocktails that had an arrow on it and uh, three primary colored circles that were on the sign you could see from the highway as you drove by and the building was pretty nondescript it was 
It was, a, I remember when I was a little kid, it was red. It was kind of a dark red with white trim around the windows. And then later they just painted it all brown. But um, it, uh, it was an interesting building. It was like a two-story building with a little apartment on the, on the second floor. And then it had this dining room that was off to one side that ran along the ocean. And I remember it was significant because it had these awnings in front of the windows and you couldn't see the sky you could only see the ocean because the building faced south the sun just beat through it all the time and it was on this odd little stretch of highway they used to have these little homes there were all these little real really dreary little cabins along the highway they tore them all down to make to make uh, public parking and public access to the beach the lease had run out on the properties and so they tore all those houses down but they were pretty pretty dingy. Uh, some of them didn't have plumbing, and every now and then one of them would fall into the sea because the uh, pilings would get pulled out by a, a large swell. And uh, Ted's Rancho, my mother, told me that on her high school graduation from Dorsey High School, they had their big, they had their big graduation party at Ted's Rancho. Now, as you can see, this extra fine soft nib doesn't really use very much ink. And that makes this a great pen for sketching and drawing with because it just goes and goes. Uh, one more thing before I go is just to uh, put my name on this and we'll try to give it a little, a little panache here. And, uh, well, Ted's Rancho. It's uh, one of those things that you used to pass on the side of the highway. I remember the last time we went there, my dad had run out of gas and we had to pick him up and he was the... He had to walk back to the phone and use the phone at Ted's Rancho. And we had to drive all the way from North Malibu, all the way back, to come pick him up. And uh, that's it.